It's time now for our international press review, and for that, I'm joined in the studio now by Deepti Lohan. Hi, Deepti. Hi, Haxi. Uh, a very sobering figure this Thursday uh, in Israel's war in Gaza. 30,000 Palestinians have now died in the enclave. Deepti. Yeah, that, that figure, that's right, Haxi. That figure is the focus of French left wing paper Liberation's front page today. Let's show you that front page. Uh, as you see there, that figure in very a bold text on the front of Liberation, 30,000 Palestinians dead in Gaza, most of them women and children, as a result of Israel's counteroffensive against Ham Hamas uh, following last October's terror attacks. Uh, UN observers say the death toll could be far higher since uh, the bodies buried under rubble still haven't been accounted for, many of those bodies. Uh, the Gaza Strip has been, of course, uh, bombarded almost incessantly since last October, and Liberation has sort of mapped out the counteroffensive in Gaza. Most of the strikes you see here are hitting the north of the enclave, while uh, a, a large number of uh, displaced people in the south, um, you have almost a million displaced Palestinians in Rafa, and uh, just over 750,000 in Han Yunus. Um, more than one in two Palestinians urgently need food, and around 25% are uh, facing famine. Liberation, in its um, coverage today, uh, in its editorial, uh, is uh, deploring what it calls an intolerable situation, and it explains that uh, the horror of October 7th terror attack should be constantly remembered and constantly condemned and that all efforts must be made to free the Israeli hostages. Uh, however, it calls the way that Palestinian civilians have been treated intolerable. The paper taking aim in particular at Western and Arab countries' attitudes, uh, calling them at best impotent in convincing Israeli authorities to uh, call off their offensive and at worst complicit with Israel. We move on now, uh, Dipti, to Ghana, where lawmakers have passed a new bill that criminalises members of the country's LGBTQ community. Yeah, a very worrying step backwards uh, in terms of gay rights in uh, Ghana. Haxi, this is uh, on the front. Uh, this is on in, on a website called OK Africa, a Pan African uh, website. This new bill describes uh, prescribes a three-year prison sentence for anyone identifying with the. Um, identifying as queer, essentially, and uh, individuals or organizations funding or forming LGBTQ organizations could face five years uh, in prison. Uh, this website explaining that the bill was actually watered down from uh, longer punishments and um, a, a bill that even suggested gay conversion therapy. Uh, that was that those um, those details were eventually watered down due to public pressure. President Akufa Addo must now decide whether or not to sign that bill into law. Uh, as the New York Times explains today, uh, the bill is the latest in a wave of uh, anti-gay legislation on the African continent. Tanzania, Niger, Namibia have tightened laws. U Uganda, of course, being one of uh, the uh, one of the uh, countries on the continent where being gay is punishable by death. Excellent. Well, Dipti, we're now just uh, months away from the opening of the Paris Olympic Games. Uh, today marks the inauguration of the Athletes' Olympic Village. Yeah, that's right. The much-awaited Athletes' uh, Olympic Village that's on the front page of Le Monde. There's also a, a double-page uh, uh, article in its edition. It, this uh, village will be in the department of Seine-Saint-Denis. That's actually uh, uh, in Paris's north. It's also one of the poorest departments in all of France, and there is a reason that the Athletes' Village was chosen to be there. It was uh, hoped that post-Olympic uh, Games it would uh, boost the neighborhood. So 300,000 square meters of real estate lining the River Seine there will be housing 14,000 athletes during the Olympic and Paralympic Games this summer. But the Games ultimately will be sort of a footnote in the history of this sprawling construction. Uh, Le Monde explaining that after the Games, everything will be dismantled and the whole area will be reconverted into a new business district. It is hoped at least for 6,000 people. It is facing uh, some challenges for the moment, notably that a lot of apartments on sale are still uh, on sale uh, despite all the buzz around the Olympics. Now, speaking of French sports, let's uh, talk about heartbreak today for France's uh, uh, female football team, they lost 0-2 to Spain's La Roja in the final of the League of Nations yesterday in Seville. 
uh, the French side simply outclassed by their Spanish counterparts. You see uh, Mundo Deportivo, that's a Spanish paper, celebrating uh, the, uh, for, uh, the Spaniards' win, uh, where while L'Equipe, the French sports paper, says glory for the French team, will simply have to wait. OK, well, finally from you, Dipti, uh, today is the 29th of February, something you only get to say once every four years, of course. <laughs> it's uh, a leap year. Uh, tell us more. Yeah, there's a lot of interesting articles today. Um, I don't have it here, but the BBC had a really interesting article about um, how Leap Day came about and why. Basically, uh, it takes the Earth 365 and a little bit more days to uh, a circle around the sun, which means that our calendar year is not a nice, neat 365 days. Uh, to get around this mathematical con conundrum uh, over uh, a very long period of centuries, long period, um, several experiments were made to introduce leap seconds, leap hours, leap days uh, to fix this mathematical con conundrum, essentially to ensure that we would celebrate New Year's uh, around the same time each year. Um, fun fact, leap years occur every four years, well that you know, but uh, they do not occur at the turn of the century unless the, uh, that year is divisible by or can be divided by 400. It explains why in the year 2000 we did have a leap year because if you can do a bit of basic math, 200, uh, 2000 can be divided neatly by 400. Uh, so happy birthday to all of you fortunate or unfortunate people born on the 29th of February. Um, you're part of a day with a lot of weird customs here in France. Uh, this uh, France Info, this website, news website, is talking about uh, what is possibly the world's least published magazine. It's called La Bougie pour le Sapeur, and it is, you guessed it, published once every four years. You don't want to be getting any uh, misprints in that one. No, no <laughs> that's not possible. <laughs>